Hello and welcome to the next episode of my Learn With Me Hydrosynth series. This is episode 11, LFOs part 2. So first, what is Learn With Me? Learn With Me is currently two series where I take you through my process of learning to get the most out of a synthesizer end to end. I've done it for the OP6 and now I'm doing it for the Ashen Sound Machines Hydrosynth Explorer. This is the same sound engine as the original Hydrosynth in a more compact package, including a 37 mini key poly aftertouch keyboard. I have described what I thought of the general build quality, the control paradigm, I've described the signal flow and the features that are available to us, and I've gone into more detail describing the oscillators, the mutants, which are audio effects for the oscillators, the filters, the envelopes, and I've started talking about the LFOs. What I'd like to do today is, rather than just having demonstrated the features of the LFO, I would like to use them to design something that might be a little more musically useful. I think, uh, in it patch, one of the things which strikes me as quite a compelling possibility is to sequence two oscillators with a different melody and probably to use a looping envelope, um, maybe a, a looping envelope on the filter and a regular envelope on the VCA to allow us to play the sequences and hopefully find some more interest there. So let's get straight to it. First, I'm going to be using BPM sync. I'm going to be using two LFOs because I want to sequence two different oscillators. Oscillator one, is going to be modulated by LFO1. Oscillator 2 is going to be modulated by LFO2. Um, let's go for the tri saw wave. Oops, I didn't mean to turn the key tracking down. So oscillator 1 is in tri saw, oscillator 2 is in tri saw. In the mixer, I'll turn both oscillators up. So we can already hear that the LFOs are doing their job. Currently, both LFOs are set to the same rate, and they are also both set to polytrigger. Polytrigger meaning that each note that I play will have its own LFO. But because both LFOs are at the same rate, at the same phase, simultaneously triggered, the pitch modulation of both of them for both oscillators, in other words, is going to be the same. I could do something different where, for example, I set the phase of one of them to be 180. So one of them is going to move in the opposite direction. Let's listen. So one of them is going up while the other one is going down. So that's already one possibility, but that's not really what I wanted to do here today. What I wanted to do was to demonstrate the step LFO. So let's jump this into step mode. Let's jump, no, nope, let's not set the delay. Let's jump this one into step mode and this one into step mode. Okay, so they're both in step mode. They're both in a quarter beat per step. Now let's jump to the step page. This one can have eight steps. And let's say that this one is going to have five steps. I'm going to put both of them in semi-lock. So in other words, they'll be locked to playing a musical pitch. And I'm going to play a little melody on each one. So, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is what I'll play on this one. And I can use the shortcut here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's just try. Already sounds pretty cool. So we have got LFO1, that's oscillator 1, playing this melody. And oscillator 2 is playing the default melody, which goes up an octave, down an octave, and then to unison. So listen. Da -na -na. That's um, one of the oscillators. Oscillator 2 is doing that. And oscillator 1 is playing out. It's playing the other melody. So now I'd like to convert this to a melody. We have got a five-step sequence, so I'm thinking... 
No, maybe. Yeah, let's go for that. So let's program those steps. So we can hear them playing against each other. Already that sounds pretty interesting to me, but I would like to have some animation to separate those notes from each other. So the thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use the filter to do that. So I'm going to turn the filter all the way down. So presently you can hear almost nothing. You won't be able to hear absolutely nothing because filter tracking is on. So this is not going completely closed. And I don't really want to turn filter tracking off because this will mean it works less well in other octaves. But I'm going to turn up the envelope one amplitude to correspond there. So, so now it sounds like nothing's happening. Why? Because the envelope by default has sustain at 100%. I would like BPM syncing here because I would like the same rhythm playing. So I can set the decay and the release both to quarter because I'd like this to play the same whether I'm holding the note or not and the sustain to zero. So that's one iteration of this movement. I'd like it to start a little bit more open, I think. That sounds a little better to me. A little bit of resonance. So now what I can do is I can turn on looping. I can set a fixed number of loops. Only plays three times, or I can have infinite loops. So already some pretty interesting things going on. I feel like I don't want it carrying on indefinitely here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make I'm going to make the envelope with a sustain quite low, quite a long decay, let's say eight seconds and a two second release. And since we have re-triggering set poly, two, three, four, and five, and six, and seven, eight, one, so you hear that I have, I can have them playing off beat with one another. One of the things to bear in mind here is that in voice mode, we have the capacity to lock to a scale. Locking to a scale only locks the pitch which is being sent to the oscillators, not any offset of that pitch. So in other words, this melodic sequence cannot be quantized in this way. So we are chromatically transposing the sequence as I play up. So if I play, it's simultaneously playing the same intervals against this note as this note. If I play the fifth, It sounds reasonable if I play the octave. Sounds good. Play the tritone. Sounds quite unusual. So you have to be aware how you use this, but I think in general it plays quite, um, quite pleasantly. Listening to that already, I think I'd like to make these a little bit more aggressive in the curve. I also might decrease the tempo. An interesting thing there is that I set this to seconds time, but maybe it would have made more sense to set it beats time. So let's set the decay to one bar, the release to half a bar. So you can see, I hope, that these BPM synced times can be quite convenient. 
This is sounding pretty interesting already. So I think um, all I will do is I'd be interested to see how ring mod sounds actually. So let's let's go into solo. Let's solo the ring mod and turn it up. I describe that as quite colourful, so I think I don't want it too loud. I think it might add a little bit of flavour. A little bit of noise. Let's um let's maybe just the noise colour. Now let's add some effects. I think most important is gonna be a delay. So let's BPM sync that delay. Um these are running at quarters, so let's see. It's maybe dotted eighth delay. Let's turn this up. Nice, I like that. So I'm going to turn feedback higher. Create a little bit of velocity sensitivity here. Let's add some reverb. Hall is probably good. Uh, let's try it 100% wet just to listen. I think it's maybe a bit too bright. Even damp the high end more. I think that's going to work for us. So let's try and. So what have we got? We've got two LFOs, both step sequencing. They are sequencing the pitch of these two oscillators. I have a regular envelope, envelope two, which is also BPM synced, so as it plays nicely with those tempos. And we have envelope one, also BPM synced, but cycling to allow us to repeat the notes. So it gives us a feel almost like a transposing sequencer or an arpeggiator. It wouldn't play very well with the arpeggiator, because the arpeggiator only goes down to quarter divisions and this sequence is quarter division. So it would go to a new note every time it just played one. But if I set these to use something much faster, say they were doing 30 second notes, then several notes of this sequence could play here. But then to do that, I'd need to make the tempo much slower. Otherwise it probably wouldn't sound very musical. Either way, let's have a quick play with what we have before we finish for today. Um, note that these sequences are just uh, C minor pentatonic. You can play them on any root. I'll play them on D root, but D root is a little less convenient because there's no D up the top of the keyboard. We have four Cs on the keyboard and we don't have four of any other note, but let's play it. So this, I think, already sounds quite interesting. It doesn't sound like what you would imagine a patch would sound like. We've only used a small number of the modulation sources. We've got three more envelopes and three more LFOs available. These can be used in conventional or unconventional manners. We haven't touched the mutants. We haven't, um, we've used a bit of the ring mode and the noise. We haven't really done anything particularly clever with the filters, and I've only done some very basic effects. So I think between the remaining parameters, you can imagine that something relatively simple, even combined with the arpeggiator, as I described, you could have something that was very interesting to perform and provided for some quite unexpected results. In fact, you could even use the scale definition and only have the scale be Cs. Uh, then you wouldn't have to worry about the possibility of hitting different notes, and then basically you just hit a note in any of the octaves or the top. 
and that it would always stay in sync. And then you could play purely rhythmically and not have to worry about pitch apart from which octave you played in. So long story short, a lot of possibilities. I hope you have been enjoying this series. I hope you have been enjoying your hydrosynths if you have one. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope you'll join me for some more. But most importantly, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining me today and goodbye.